Hello and welcome to St. Peter and Zion Lutheran Churches. Today we celebrate the 11th Sunday at Pentecost. The Old Testament reading for this, the 11th Sunday at Pentecost, is from 1 Kings chapter 19. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a message to Elijah saying, So may the gods do to me and more also. If I do not make your life as the life of the one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid, and he arose and ran for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a boom tree. And he asked that he might die, saying, it is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. And I lay down and slept under a broom tree, and behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came again a second time, and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. And he rose and ate and drank, and went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. This is the word of the Lord. And our epistle comes to us from Ephesians chapters 4 and 5. This I say and testify in the Lord, that you might no longer walk as the Gentiles do, fertility of their minds, they are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, due to their hardest of heart, they have become callous, have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. This is not the way you learned in Christ, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus. To put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt already through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sin, sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of the Lord, the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me. Whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me. I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. 
for this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I'll raise him up on the last day. So the Jews grumbled about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent to me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned of the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the man in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. Gracious Father, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Grant that Christ the bread of life, may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you for God our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The relationship between truth and feelings over the past few years have become complicated in our culture. We can look at any number of social media platforms and People will often confuse these ideas. People will now refer to their truth. But what does that really mean? Is that referring to the actual, factual, objective truth? Or is it referring to their feelings? Often when people refer to their truth, they are really referring to their feelings and what they want the truth to be. This is different than objective truth. This confusion of feelings and truth leads to an ultimate downplaying of the truth. However, there was a time when truth was important in our culture. We thought it was important for people to know the truth so that they could make good decisions as they lived their lives. Now our culture values feelings more than truth. Who cares if something is true or not as long as it makes me feel good about myself? The really strange thing about this is that our culture still wants most people to base their decisions on truth. We want the banker to keep careful track of our money and not just do what he feels like with our money. We want the doctor to treat us for the disease we actually have not for the disease that is more interesting to him. We even want the fast food restaurant to give us the food we ordered instead of the food they feel like giving us. Our lives are full of examples where it is actually dangerous to base our decisions on our feelings instead of the truth. I don't know about you, but I much prefer the dull boredom of landing a 747 on the runway as opposed to the excitement of landing in the nearby cornfield. Despite of all this, we have become a culture that celebrates people who follow their feelings instead of following the truth. This problem with truth is not something new. People down through the centuries have always had this strange attitude toward truth. When we are dealing with things in this world, we value people who can deal with reality, businessmen, leaders, scientists, and so on. Nevertheless, when we consider our eternal well-being, the importance of truth more or less disappears. 
Even though God himself revealed eternal truth through his prophets, people prefer the religion from their own imaginations. They wander away from the truth. They forget the promises God made through his prophets. The Holy Spirit made promises about the Messiah. When the Messiah comes, the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. Jesus has been fulfilling those signs. As Jesus preached and taught, the blind received their sight. The lame walked, the lepers were cleansed, the deaf heard, the dead were raised up, and the poor had good news preached to them. In fact, Jesus had taken the few loaves of bread and some fish and fed 5,000 men and their families. The crowd should have seen these signs and said, Jesus is the Messiah. They should have known that his words are the truth. Therefore, when Jesus began to tell the crowds about the blessings of believing in him, the crowd should have listened. When Jesus described himself as the bread from heaven that cures eternal hunger, and the drink that cures eternal thirst, they should have recognized him as the Messiah. When Jesus described himself as the one who came down from heaven, they should have recognized that God the Father sent him into human flesh. When Jesus described the relationship between himself and the Father, they should have believed that Jesus is the Son of God. Sadly, when people forget the truth and believe the law, the truth often makes them angry. Instead of listening to Jesus, the people grumbled. They remember the boy Jesus who grew up in the home of Joseph and Mary. How could someone who grew up in their neighborhood be the Messiah, the Son of God? They consider it ridiculous, offensive, and foolish that he claimed to have come down from heaven and to dispense a bread which afforded eternal life. They thought he was either an evil liar or a great fool for trying to persuade them that he had come from heaven. Despite all the signs that Jesus was proclaiming the truth, the, petite, the people rejected Jesus. This should be a warning to us. Like the people of Capernaum, we also prefer to reject our Savior. Each of us need to examine ourselves. How am I like those people? How do I reject the truth that God wants to give me in his word? Do I skip over the parts of God's word that bother me? Do I just read my favorite parts of the Bible and ignore the rest? Do I try to explain away the parts of the Bible that bother me? Perhaps the most offensive thing Jesus said came near the end of today's reading. He said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. That small word, anyone, means that the salvation he earned with his suffering and death on the cross for all people in all places and at all times. It means that the worst sinner in the entire history of the world can receive the forgiveness that Jesus earned with his death. At the end of World War II, Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod pastor, Chaplain Henry Gerke, had a very challenging call to fulfill. His commanding officer sent him to Nuremberg to provide spiritual counsel for the Nazi prisoners who were on trial for war crimes. Like many LCMS pastors, he both flew in German, and before the war, he had conducted a prison ministry in the United States. Some of the prisoners, of course, rejected the gospel of Christ, crucified for the forgiveness of sins. But yet others heard Gerke's words. The Holy Spirit brought them into the family of God even while they waited for the hangman's noose. Joachim von Bibbentrop, 
was one of the Nazi criminals in Gerke's congregation. As he stood on the hangman's platform, he said, I place all my confidence in the Lamb who made atonement for my sins. May God have mercy on my soul. Then he turned to Gerke and said, I will see you again. The black hood was pulled over his face. The 13 coiled noose was put around his neck and he dropped through the trap door. Jesus said, anyone. The apostle Paul described himself and said, I am the least of the apostles unworthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. He also said, the saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. The Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. Jesus said, anyone. St. Augustine was an immoral womanizing man before the Holy Spirit performed the miracle of faith in him. He lived a life as obscene as anything that you hear about today. Nevertheless, the Holy Spirit worked faith in him and became one of the great theologians of all time. Some people take offense that such obscenely evil sinners are waiting at Jesus' side waiting for the resurrection on the last day. The truth is that the salvation of these horrible sinners points to the simple fact that Jesus died for the sins of the entire world. When Jesus said, if anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever, he meant that it makes no difference who you are or what you have done. There is forgiveness for you and his perfect life his suffering, and his death. Whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. It is by the Holy Spirit's gift of faith that we can eat of Jesus Christ, the bread of life from heaven. By that gift of faith, we can believe that Jesus is eternal food and drink who will keep us alive with him in eternity. We have the promise of Jesus that just as he rose from the dead, so also will he appear on the last day to raise me and all the dead. On that day, all the sinners who believe in him will rise in body and soul and join him in eternal life. And as Jesus said, this promise is for anyone. In the name of Christ Jesus, may the peace of God surpass our understanding, keep your hearts and minds. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the pure proclamation of the gospel throughout all the world, that false teaching and Satan's lies will be thwarted, that many would be drawn to the Father through his Son, Jesus the Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our congregation and all congregations in our circuit, district, and sin, that they may flourish and thrive, be strong witnesses to their confession of faith, Show mercy on account of God, and live together in unity of doctrine and love for the neighbor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For pastors, especially those suffering from conflict, burnout, or depression, that our Lord would give them strength and courage through the example of Elijah and all who have gone before them, bringing them comfort through the forgiveness of sins and the promise of everlasting life. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For all families and homes, that one generation may tell the next the wonderful works of God in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the nation, that all may live in harmony, neither suffering from nor wanting nor fearing from danger. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the sick, that they would never doubt that God hears their prayers. And for all others who suffer from any kind of hardship, that the Lord would receive their pain and provide for them. Let us pray to the Lord for those who mourn, that they would be comforted by Jesus' words, that he is a bread of life, and anyone in, who eats of this bread will live forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Father of our risen, ascended, and glorified Lord, has promised that 
those who believe in Christ as the true and living bread, and never hunger nor thirst. By your Holy Spirit, keep us steadfast in faith. Give us grace to live out our baptismal lives in repentance and forgiveness. Keep our eyes focused on the life that never ends, knowing that you will rise up and raise us up on the last day. The Saint Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us today.